eerily quiet. Look at this building. I wonder what this was. Back up! It's just abandoned. What is this building, guys? It's kind of like creepy. Kako vam se sviđa, graho. Wow, does this town have a lot of empty buildings? So this is a proper Yugoslav ghost town. One last thing before we go. Zdravo! Good morning once again guys from Nikšić. I have good news and bad news. The good news is that today we are going to do some more adventurizing in the beautiful country of Montenegro. We're going to go see a town that has a lot of historical significance and talk to some of the locals there. The bad news is that it's pouring rain. And that it's going to rain all day just about. But the rain is not going to prevent us from doing a little bit of adventurizing here. Tonight I'm staying in the town of Herceg Novi back on the coast. So join me as we travel there and on the way we stop in the town of Grahovo. Let's go check it out. Grahovo is the hometown of the legendary partisan hero Sava Kovacevic. The partisans were of course the communist resistance fighters during World War II here in Yugoslavia and they were the most successful resistance group in all of Europe during World War II effectively liberating most of the country even before the Allied powers came through led of course by none other than Tito and one of the most famous fighters was Sava Kovacevic who worked his way up during World War II and became a leading commander in the army and if you watched my video yesterday you'll know that in this country they built some amazing World War II monuments well one of those monuments that they built was in the town of Grahovo and it was dedicated to the partisan hero who died in battle, Sava Kovacevic. So we are going to go and check out that monument and hopefully meet some legendary Montenegrin villagers. And here he is, Sava Kovacevic, killed in battle in 1943. A Yugoslav hero, a Montenegrin hero, and today we're going to go see his hometown and see a monument built in his honor. Nikšić. N i k š i č. Nikšić. It's a spomenik. Well guys, welcome to Grahovo, Montenegro, Cernogora. From the bus you could see that it's a very flat plain surrounded by mountains. So that's pretty beautiful. And the Spomenik, the monument to Sava Kovacevic, really kind of dominates the town. It's the big thing that you can see from above and even from in the town. And it's kind of uh, hidden by trees right now, but it's right here, this, this hill is the monument that we're going to go check out. We'll do that first and then we will explore this town a bit more. Sava Kovacevic was born in a nearby village. He was born in the early 1900s, I think 1903 if I remember correctly. And once the Second World War broke out, Sava Kovacevic proved to be a valuable fighter. And it was here in the Grahovo area that he led some troops and started the resistance movement against the occupying Italian forces. So right here in Grahovo was uh, the beginning of the Montenegrin uprising. And uh, Sava Kovacevic was the leader of that uprising. And then Tito heard of this success and uh, he appointed him as, you know, the leader of a brigade in Montenegro. And eventually he ended up working in Tito's entourage and he was a part of the battalion or the squadron or whatever that was tasked with defending the high up officials in the communist party. So his job was to protect Tito and the other high ranking partisans during the war. And as we talked about yesterday, in 1942, the partisans were forced to flee from Montenegro up north into Bosnia and the Bosnian border is just a few miles from here. It's, it's eerily quiet in this village. There's nobody around. 
All I can hear is the birds, the wind, and some cars up on the highway. So during this Battle of Susietka, which happened in Bosnia, I talked a little bit about the history of the Battle of Su Susietka yesterday um, in my other video. But essentially, the partisans had to make this daring escape. They had to push through the Axis lines. And it led to a lot of partisans getting killed, including Sava Kovacevic himself. But they were able to secure the escape of Tito and the other high-ranking partisan officials. Look at this building. I wonder what this was. It's just abandoned. I wonder if it was a school or what? Holy smokes. It looks crazy. We've encountered our first dog of Grahovo. Hopefully he's a friendly guy. Hi. Oh no, I'm, I'm not going to do anything to you. Back up! Whew. That was the first time I ever had to yell at a dog. How'd I do, guys? What an interesting little town here. So far, I've not seen any people. The main square of Grahovo. So anyways, during the Battle of Susietka, Sava Kovacevic himself was killed, but he helped Tito and the other leading partisans escape and live to fight another day. And obviously they would regroup, and by 1943 and 1944, they would come back with a vengeance, and they would go on to liberate the majority of Yugoslavia. And so because of this, Sava Kovacevic, in 1943 was named as one of Yugoslavia's first war heroes. He was one of the first national heroes of socialist Yugoslavia. So for that reason, during the rest of the socialist era, up until the early 90s, Sava Kovacevic was this folk hero, a Montenegrin folk hero, a Yugoslav folk hero. And this monument here was constructed in his honor in the 60s, I believe, maybe the 70s. And... This here is the Spomen Park, Ustanka i Revolucija, 1978. So there you go, the 1970s. The Memorial Park, I don't know what Ustanka is, and the revolution. So to the partisans, and specifically to Sava Kovacevic, who died heroically helping to liberate Yugoslavia from the Axis powers. And you can see a lot of the names of the partisans who were killed. Another Kovacevic, 1920 to 1945. Here's another Kovacevic, 1919 to 1942. Looks like there's a lot of Kovaceviches here. These are all Kovacevic, Kovacevic, Kovacevic. Here's some other names. Bulajic, Bulajic, killed in 1942, 1941. And all of these stones are dedicated to partisans who were killed trying to liberate Yugoslavia. They gave their lives to liberate and eventually build what would become socialist Yugoslavia. As we continue up these stairs, you can see the main memorial is up there. And Sava Kovacevic and many other partisans like him would become folk heroes in Yugoslavia. They made movies and songs about him. And this was part of the propaganda, or as Dan Carlin would call it, the marketing material of socialist Yugoslavia. It was these monuments to these heroes, these war heroes who were killed trying to liberate the country. And this would have been packed back in the day. And they would have taken children here on field trips, Yugoslav patriots from all around the country. If they would come to visit Montenegro on vacation, they would stop by and pay homage to Sava Kovacevic. Now, of course, it's overgrown with plants and things. Doesn't get much upkeep. 
But let's go and see this monument. Wow. <laughs> that is a Spomenik, if I've ever seen one. And look at the view of this valley. Here, July 13th, 1941. National hero, Sava Kovacevic. Uh, along with the Grahovo partisans, started the first rebellion against the occupiers. So this is where the first resistance in Montenegro began in July 1941, just a couple months after the Axis had occupied Yugoslavia. As the rain intensifies, look at the statue. You have Sava Kovacevic, famous with his mustache. He has a very distinct look. And behind him are surely the other partisans following him into battle. You can see the faces on them. And, and as you go further back on the monument, it becomes more abstract and less people looking. And here it is, guys. And this is the highest thing in the entire area. I mean, they built this. I'm sure that the hill was already here, but they made sure to build this on the highest point in Grahovo. Beautiful. Look at that guy. Look at his head. Sava Kovacevic. Commandant Sava is the name of the song in his honor. Commander Sava. Grahobo. Not a bad place. And they've got these lights to light up the statue at night. And these lights are definitely newer. So that means that there's been some upkeep of this statue, at least, even since the Yugoslav years. So the people here clearly still respect him at least a little bit. At least someone does. And I'm excited to ask some people in the town what they think of Sava Kovacevic. All right, now let's get out of the rain and get into the town of Grahovo. And guys, I am going to go inside and find some food because it's pouring rain now. The rain has subsided a little bit once again. And wow, does this town have a lot of empty buildings. Look at this, I wonder what this is or was. I mean, was this the town hall or something? And this too, it's all empty. It's right in the center of town. You have your two cafes here and then just empty abandoned buildings. This one's got some beer in it. I wonder if it's like a warehouse now. I wonder if it was houses before. Oh, our friend is following us. We made a new friend, guys. Here in Grahovo, Steima. I have a question. I didn't know how far. You know what was the house in this village? Kuć, zgradu. Okej, i sada... Zemlju trest, 79, tenka je bio. Aha. I oni su otišli ili... Jesu, jesu, jesu. I taj to je bilo ko općina ili... Nije, nije, no, stanovi. Stanovi, okej. Da, 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 da. Okej, razumijem. Pa interesantno. Interesantno. Hvala. Hvala bili. So I guess there was some kind of earthquake that made for... These houses to be damaged, and then I guess the people left. 
another abandoned building. I mean, it, it doesn't look like that damaged. So I don't know why they would leave because of an earthquake. Maybe someone can help me out in the comments. Wow, just a lot of abandoned buildings here in Grachovo. But it's a nice place. And what is this complex here? This is crazy. This just looks abandoned. Is it an abandoned school or... What is this building, guys? Holy smokes. Is it a school? Ah, this might be the, the school of Grachovo. But it looks like the building has seen better days. You can go and read about it. There's a plaque. It seems like a town that is built for more people than there actually are here. Hope we're allowed to be in here. It's kind of like creepy. It's interesting because the building looks abandoned, but then there's these like nice things, these nice designs on the door that make it look like it's a school. Oh, it's starting to rain again, guys. Okay, let's quickly read this and get out of here. Okay, yeah, this school, I'm not gonna read this whole thing, but there was a catastrophic earthquake in 1979, which apparently damaged the school building. And uh, I can, oh, qu it's in Italian too, I can read it quickly. So this school building was built with the funds of the uh, solidarity of the workers of Yugoslavia and with the help of the people of the region of Friuli Venezia Giulia in Italy. Um, with the intent of eliminating the consequences of the tremendous earthquake on the 15th of April in 1979. All right, that was way faster than having to read the Cyrillic. Thank you for putting it in Italian. And grazie to the people of uh, Friuli Venezia Giulia for helping to rebuild this school building. And uh, I guess it's still in use now. So that explains, I guess, why it's a little bit decrepit. Wow, so this earthquake must have really f***ed up this town. Catastrophic earthquake in 1979. So that must have been one year after they built the Sava Kovacevic monument, which was built in 1978. But the earthquake couldn't take our old friend Sava down. But yeah, I mean, everywhere you look, there's just damaged buildings. There's a cow over there. That's big. Big stuff. It's like the most exciting thing happening in Grahovo. Is this cow just grazing? Well, I don't know what to do, guys. Usually there's just like somebody walking around. I guess it's raining. The abandoned town of Grahovo. Destroyed by an earthquake in 1979. An old, abandoned Yugoslav town. Not really abandoned, but there's some people here. Abandoned, abandoned, abandoned. You could probably get these buildings for cheap here in Grahovo if you were so inclined. You come and live here. This one might be beyond repair. But the, uh, this one, I mean, at least on the outside, it doesn't look like it's in such bad shape. Let's check out this market. We're back in the uh, main area here. Samo jedna jabuka. To je dobra jabuka. Okay. I kako vam se sviđa Grahovo? Aha, aha. Da, da, da. Kovačević. Hmm. Wow, so the Kovačević family must be very powerful around here because 
It looks like this is the history of the Kovacevic family. Wow. The Kovacevic family from Grahovo through the centuries and the wars. Huh, it's cool. Ova knjiga je priča od Kovacevic u Grahovo. Da. Jer to je važno poradica u Crnogoru ili... Da. Jeste li Kovačević? Ne. ne. <laughs> Ali ima li još Kovačević ima, ovdje? Ima, ima još I oni su... Moja uh... baba je Kovačević. A, ok, evo. <laughs> I uh, oni su uh, velika porodica ovdje. Jes. Yes. I jel... Pa je li priča od Kovačević, Sava Kovačević i porodica, jel to, to je još uh, značajno? Pa priča se još, ne toliko, ali priča se. Aha. Dobro. E, je li idete za vidjeti spomenik ponekad? Ponekad. Aha, lijepo je. To je... Yes. To je... Kad bi mi došli kod vas imali bi... Da, tako je. Da, tako je. Everything destroyed. I mean, it's hard for me to believe that this building has been sitting here like this since 1979, 45 years ago. But I guess... I guess it is. It's like a ghost town up in here. The bus doesn't come for another two and a half hours. The rain makes it really hard to walk around. Look at this sign, guys. Prodavnica Mieszowite Robe. It's a store of mixed goods, so like a general store or a grocery store. And I guess this was the store. And yeah, it's all just thrown about in there. Just a bunch of stuff hanging around. There's like beds in there. This probably was the house. And this was the store. It's all closed now. Can't even see inside. But this is a legendary sign right here. I mean, this sign, who knows, maybe it was made in 1978. The earthquake put the store out of business in 79. Now these houses seem to be more inhabited. Another house that's seen better days, but it looks like the top part is inhabited or at least has some stuff going on. They got nice windows. Bravo. Well, even if more than half the buildings are destroyed, it's a beautiful place. We've got some chickens out there and uh, it looks like they sell homemade eggs. Unfortunately, I don't think I would really get much use out of eggs. The town of Grahovo probably doesn't look much different from how it did in 1980, just after the earthquake. Especially with all the destroyed houses. So this is a proper Yugoslav ghost town. Somewhat ghost town, it's a quasi ghost town. You know what guys, screw it, we're gonna buy some eggs. There's nothing else to do in this town, we're gonna buy some eggs. Oh wow, look, you can see Sava. Sava Kovacevic again. Kakste. Let us buy some eggs. Maybe laid by one of these chickens here. Country code for Montenegro is 382, if you're curious. Nice, they have a WhatsApp. We're gonna save the contact as um, Yaya Grahovo. Ja sam ispred vaš kuć, kuća. Ja bi volio, ja bi volio kupiti Yaya, Yaye, ako vi ste And now we wait. 
if we are able to get some eggs, then we will cook them for dinner tonight and for breakfast tomorrow. I really wonder what people think when they, when I message them, like for a hotel or something. Because I'm not that good at this language. So they're probably like, either something's wrong with this person, they don't know how to type. Or it's just like a foreigner. Because like not that many foreigners learn this language, right? Like how many could there be? They should. You should learn this language. This is one of the best languages to learn. Because you can travel around places like this and you can talk to the locals. Because these countries, Montenegro, Bosnia and Herzegovina, Croatia and Serbia, I mean, they have so much to offer between them. Plus, this language is spoken in towns in North Macedonia, as we've seen. In Romania, there's some people who speak this language. In Kosovo, there's like 20 million speakers worldwide. And so everywhere you go, you can find someone who speaks this language. Ooh, it looks spooky on the GoPro. Wee! <laughs> when I'm editing this later, I'm gonna be like, what the hell was I doing? Well, while we're waiting to see if we're going to get some eggs, maybe we can do a little Serbo-Croatian lesson here. A little Bosno-Montenegrin language learning. Ahem. Prodajem domaća jaja. What does that mean? It means I sell homemade eggs. Dajem is I give and prodajem is I sell. So I sell. And then you have domaća, which dom means like house. I think in Russian the word is dom as well. So yeah, you have... Prodajem dom acha, so domach. That ach at the end makes it like of the home. So domacha, prodajem domacha. I sell homemade, and then yaya, as we said, is the word for eggs. And one egg is yaya, two eggs is yaye. But because of the fact that there are cases in this language, if you speak German or if you've learned Latin or another Slavic language, then you'll know what I mean. And it's the worst thing ever. And so yaye becomes yaya. So there you go, a little bit of language learning for you today. Prodajem domacha yaya. All right, we're on to the next establishment here, right next to the old abandoned grocery store. Let's just sit under this awning, see what they can give us. Hiradish. Ja kupim nešto jeli mogu sjediti ovdje. Okay, super. Ja tu jedan pivo mor. Dva euro. Dobro. Bravo. Koliko za, za jelen pivo? Euro ili ne? Euro, okay. Evo. I jeli mogu sjesti... Okay, hvala. Hvala puno. Hvala puno. Ovo je dobar pivo, ali ti ne znaš. Da. Ti ne piješ. Pijem. Ah, piješ jelen. I koliko godni imaš? Pet godina. A, ah, pa ima spomenik. Znaš. Znaš. Znaš li to je Sada Kovačević? Narodna heroj. Ođe je bila rat. Da, da. I jesi li malo partizan? Haha, <laughs> partizanima. Ajde. Otvora, otvora se. Da, 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 da. Jesi li u školu? Ne. Ne, šta radiš? Berem drva i prodavam. Ko ti drva prodavam jom? Imaš ti drva? Drva? Ne. Šta je drva? A, ah, wood. Ah, drveće, tako. Prodaješ drva? Da. Odakle uzmiješ drva? Aha, pa ti ideš u šuma? Da. I... <laughs> Jesi li u školu? Da, dajme se bilo u školu. Gdje, gdje ti je škola? Da, to. Da, da. 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 Ajde. Drago mi je bilo. <laughs> Vidimo se. Vidimo se, drugovi. Platio sam. Ti si vidio da sam platio. Bye bye.
I'd, I sat with those kids and drank a beer for like an hour. But now it's time to go to the bus. So I have to say one thing about Grajovo, it's been real and it's been fun, but it hasn't been real fun. And most of that's because of the rain. I'm sure the people here are nice and we could have had some fun. Um, but the rain kind of put a damper on all that and I just moved from dry place to dry place. But thank goodness the rain has cleared up a tiny bit. Not all the way, but... One last thing before we go. Zdravo, jel prodajete jaja? Ah, nema. Okay, nema veze. Hvala. Ciao. Ciao. Well, we got to see our Spomenik, and then it was all downhill from there, here in Grahovo. So a lot of history here in Grahovo, but no eggs. Tomorrow, I fly back to Switzerland from Dubrovnik, so we're gonna have a little two-country adventure. We're gonna be in Montenegro and we're gonna be in Croatia. A lot of you have commented that you want to see me go back to Croatia and tomorrow is the day. Man, those, that kid was like five years old working in the store and then he was telling me they got him working going into the forest and like getting wood. Like that's insane. I, I mean, they were obviously kids and they were like f***ing around about a lot of stuff so I'm sure that they were lying about some stuff but if that kid's really five years old going into the forest and getting wood, that's wild. That is quite a life. But nice kids, I wish the best for them. And I wish the best for the town of Grahovo. Oh look, one last look at Sava Kovacevic. Defending the proud nation of Montenegro and of Yugoslavia from the Axis invaders. Smrt fascismo. Well, here we are at the rural Montenegrin bus stop. The bus should come in five minutes, if I believe what they told me, and I do. The Balkan buses rarely let you down. After being in Cernagora, Montenegro, for about 48 hours now, my thoughts on the country is that as far as countries go, this is a good one. Nice people, beautiful landscapes. I really think I'm hitting a major level up in my um, Balkan experiences today because I've always wondered how people know where to stand when they just stand in a random place between two spots for the bus. There's like listed stops on the bus route, but then you'll just stop at some like random corner on the outskirts of a city or some like random corner in rural lands like this here. And uh, I've always wondered like how the bus knows that the people are waiting for that bus or like how the people know exactly where to stand. And today I'm learning a bit because I am now one of those people. Could this be our bus right here? I guess it's gonna come back for us, I guess. Hopefully. It said it's going to Igalo. And all I can hope for is that there's some other Western tourist on this bus. And when it stops and picks me up that they think, wow, how did this guy know where to get on the bus? And he's gonna think I'm from here, but I'm not. All right, guys, here's the test. The bus van thing is coming back. Are they gonna pick me up? Here is the moment of truth. Bravo, do you go? Okay. 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 Okay.